Hey friends, happy new year. If you are watching this on December 31st or any time in the month of January, I'm a fan of celebrating the entire month if there is a holiday within that month. So all of December was Christmas, all of November was Thanksgiving, all of October was Halloween, you get the idea. And in January is my birthday. So it is not only the new year month, but it's also my birthday month. So happy birthday upcoming to me. Happy new year to you. I'm wishing you all of the health, the prosperity, the happiness, the peace and joy that your heart desires in 2024. It's been a fantastic fragrance year for me. I have worn hundreds and hundreds of fragrances and sampled hundreds more over the past year. We've had a lot of fun on this channel. In fact, before I get started, you see all of the items on the table behind me. This is my subscriber appreciation giveaway that is in a video. The thumbnail looks like this, and I will link it below in the description box and maybe in the pinned comment for you too. The giveaway ends this coming Wednesday, January 3rd. So if you're interested in any of the items that you see behind me, there are fragrances and discovery sets and all sorts of goodies. Go check out that video and fill out the Google form. It is open to US viewers due to high shipping costs. So thank you for understanding that. Today's video is sort of a year in review of all of the fragrance awards that I do on a monthly basis. Every month I have what I call my fragrance awards. That's just my fun way of sharing with you the fragrances that I wore over the past month by putting them into categories. And that's my way of kind of sharing with you what I think about them. So last year at the end of the year, I did a year in review and I'm doing it again this year. And this is where I look across all of the fragrances that made it into a specific category. So using the example of everyday fragrance, like that's a category, an award category. I look at everything that I labeled in that category over the past 12 months and then choose the one that I think most exemplifies the characteristics of that particular category. And by the way, my December fragrance awards were posted yesterday. That thumbnail looks like this, and it will be part of the playlist that is linked in the comments below if you want to catch up on that or binge watch on all these monthly videos. We have a ton of fun in those and a lot of fun in the comments. Let's get right into this one. The first category is best for the season. Now, because it is season, I couldn't choose just one. I chose one from the winter months, one from the spring, the summer, and the fall to give you four in this particular category since all the seasons are so different and all the vibes that you get fragrance-wise in each season are a little bit different. We'll start here in winter. One of my favorite fragrances that actually got into this award category was best. It had to be in the category is what I'm trying to say. Like I couldn't just go choose another one off my shelf. It had to be one of the 12 that made it into this category over the year. That makes sense. Okay. The one for winter that I am selecting is one that I wore the day after Christmas. I wanted to wear it on Christmas, but I actually wore something different then, but it's very, very Christmassy to me. It's very much a winter fragrance and uh, personifies, if you will. Is personify the right word? I swear it's like I never took an English class and forget what vocabulary words mean when I start to <laughs> film. Let's just say it exemplifies. It best exemplifies what I think of winter. And that is one that I am not sure if this is discontinued or not. I've heard different things in the comments, but this is from Omnia Profumi and this is Bronzo in what looks to be the old bottle. This is something I purchased secondhand off of Mercari. I love the shape of this. And the way that this looks, there's something super cool about this, although I really like the current more sort of apple shaped bottles that the brand has put out. I love that this fragrance is all the spicy things that you think of when you think of like Christmas spices. The main spices are cloves and cinnamon. There's amber and vanilla in the fragrance to give it a sweet, deep, resinous touch. It's a very happy fragrance when you spray it on. The note structure says that there's leather. It reminds me very much like I have stuck my nose into, I have this little container upstairs, this mixture of cloves and nutmeg and cinnamon. And I think one other spice that I'm not recalling that I use for like pumpkin pie spice with the cloves standing out the most. Really, really nice combination of spices in here along with this beautiful amber and resinous touch that give this depth, a little bit of sweetness. I have to say this is a very happy fragrance. The notes say that there is peach in here, peach blossom. I don't know that I picked that up in particular. This is mostly spicy and sweet and ambery to me and is just delightful. It's happy. It reminds me of happy holiday smells. Like when you walk into a store that sells lots of Christmas items and there's that beautiful sort of cinnamon, vanilla mixture of smells in the air. Really, really neat fragrance. And then for the spring category, 
there are some fragrances in the celebrity and designer category that just embed themselves into my soul and don't leave. And this is one of them. This is beautiful year round, but really shines as the weather starts to warm up too hot weather and this can get a little bit cloying so that's why it is in the spring category i think i wore it like last april or march somewhere i have my notes over here this is cloud intense some call it cloud 2.0 from ariana grande i have the regular cloud and i have this and i love them both to death this one has a very sort of creamy coconutty accord that's a little bit different than the original one which is a little bit lighter and wispier this is also very very light subtle musk little hints of woodiness, some sweetness. It's a very difficult fragrance to describe. Although saffron is not listed in the note structure, it does have that sort of like light, uh, slightly airy, leathery feel that's kind of hard to describe, similar to Baccarat Rouge 540, that same kind of thing. There's a little bit of similar DNA across them, but I just love that this is creamy and light and musky and very feminine, very pretty. And I think a very alluring fragrance without being too sexy so wonderful for spring as it starts to warm up and you still want to have something a little substantial 2.0 is my pick for summer it was clear to me the winner from the ones that i wore last summer that made it into this category simone andrioli leisure in paradise this is having a real moment on youtube and it deserves in my opinion the hype i do want to share for those of you that are either newer to fragrances or if you haven't tried this this is one i would suggest sampling first some people really thought it was or think it is a nauseating fragrance not to me i think it is absolutely beautiful really intoxicating summer scent uh, characterized mostly by coconut and vanilla but it has this beautiful sort of overarching sweet fruit to it. The notes are pineapple and papaya. So pineapple comes across both sort of sweet and syrupy and light and bright. Like it has a little bit of a citrus factor to it, if you will, without being sort of bright and astringent, like some of your household cleaners can be, for example, like some people for citrus that they, they smell lemon pledge and things like that. You don't get any of that. It's sort of a creamy citrus type of uh, note that you get from pineapple. If you smell pineapple, you know what I mean. Now imagine that accompanied by this creaminess from coconut, a beautiful, like almost coconut milk, like a deep, dense coconut milk, along with sweetness from papaya. Papaya sometimes in fragrances can come across cloyingly sweet. I think it's just the right dose here. And this nice vanilla to give it a base and round it out and keep it nice and feminine and on. This is a beautiful fragrance. You know, longevity is moderate at the most. You're not going to have all day performance. And some people really don't like that for the price tag. Doesn't bother me at all. I'm happy to respray and re up on this. I think this is a really fantastic fragrance. What I call a toe curler. <laughs> you spray it on and you're just like, whoa, <laughs> because it is such a beautiful scent. Really quintessential summer fragrance. You know, fruity drink that's creamy, like it has a creamy coconut base with that fruity mixture in it. So good, so good. And then for fall, this one showed up in my Femme Fatale Vanillas video and also in my Fragrance Awards last fall. And uh, I'm so glad that this is back in production. I guess it was discontinued for a spell there. I don't think I even knew that, but it's Tom Ford Vanille Fatale. And so this is back in stock. And I think you can get this on Sephora and it'll probably show up on Joma Shop at some point, you <laughs> all. This is a beautiful, deep, resinous vanilla. So many things going on in here, like myrrh and frankincense give it this sort of a little bit of like that incense -y, churchy background feel. There's booziness from rum, there's tobacco, there's coffee, there's woody notes, there's floral notes, but at the end of the day, it's a super sexy fall vanilla. And at least this bottle that I have is lighter uh, to the skin, closer to the skin rather, not very projecting, you know, moderately long lasting. You'll probably have to be up midday, but a great date night fragrance and a great under your sweater fragrance when you want a sensual, alluring, inviting fragrance that's like a hug in a bottle without doing too much in the room. You don't want to be doing the most but you want when people to come up close to you to be sort of intrigued by your scent. Vanille Fatale is a beautiful one. So this is my fall pick. In the category of the best everyday fragrance for the entire year, so out of the 12 that were selected across the months, the one that for me is the undeniable winner for the year, for 2023, dun, 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 <laughs> is Bear from Victoria's Secret. 
let us talk about the entire experience. Well, I'm a Victoria's Secret fan. I love to go into the store. I love the merchandising in the store. I love that you can test fragrances without a sales associate harassing you. Well, most of the time, sometimes you do get harassed. <laughs> and I love that the fragrances are affordable and really feminine and beautiful. They're designed to make you feel either pretty or sexy or feminine or some combination of the three. A couple are a little bit daring, but for the most part, they're in those other categories. This particular bottle, I adore the entire shape of it. I love the lettering on it. I love the cap. I love, love the way that it feels in my hand. I just think this is a fabulous design of a fragrance. Now the actual fragrance itself, violet and sandalwood and mandarin orange. I always wanna say there's some vanilla, but there isn't any in the note structure. And I love the name of it compared to what it smells like. It smells fresh, but it also has a little bit of substance from the woodiness and it smells like a fresh out of the shower skin scent, if you will. I think it performs a little bit better than a skin scent. You know, you're going to get a moderate bubble, but it is a soft fragrance overall. It stays in feminine territory and gives you just this really pleasant, clean, crisp smell with a little bit of sensuality to it. I think it's wonderful. It is fantastic for everyday wear, fantastic for office wear. One of my top choices, for example, to wear to meetings where I'm going to be sitting really in close proximity to other people. And I want to smell pleasant and nice and feminine, but not overpowering and certainly not cloying in any way. So this is an adorable fragrance for that and really hard to go wrong. And a lot of you have said in the comments that you like it also. You've received it for Christmas or you got it this fall or you just opened up a new bottle and you were really impressed with just how lovely and simple it is. It is a simple fragrance, friends, but simple has its place and can be beautiful too. And I am thrilled with Bear. So 2023 was the year that I came to terms with the fact that I'm actually a rose lover. I enjoy it. I went through this period of denial. I was in denial that I really do enjoy rose fragrances and would say, oh, I only have a few that I like. But anyway, we've changed our minds over here and I'm now fully into rose territory. And this is one of the fragrances that really helped me realize that. So did I say the category? This is your special occasion category, a fragrance that you would wear to an evening gala, for example, you know, because I'm constantly dressed up in sequin dresses, heading out to <laughs> heading out to galas, right? No, I'm usually at home on my couch. But if I ever went back to something like that, this would be a fragrance that I would consider for that or any other special occasion in the evening, friends, where you're gathering for a special dinner or something like that. Fragrance Dubois, New York, Fifth Avenue. Not the Intense, which has a more masculine leaning feel to it. This is Fifth Avenue, which is very much characterized by a lovely, beautiful, sweet rose with a touch, not a lot, a touch of powderiness. And the powderiness feels dense and creamy instead of light and airy and like suffocating like some powders can be. And it has a woody base to it has a little bit of citrus in the opening and a couple of sort of green notes in there that are very, very mild and just add some personality to it rather than standing out. For the most part, this is a very refined, elegant, sweet rose and woody fragrance that is just so, so lovely as a melange of different types of notes in the air. It just plays together so well. There's a soft brightness to this to keep it from being overly serious, but at the same time, a fragrance with tremendous presence, a little bit regal in terms of the way that it comes across to the nose, very ladylike and not old fashioned, but bordering on being a little bit like, like almost like a modern vintage feel, if you will. I wouldn't say it smells vintage, but like if you brought vintage into the modern era and gave it a modern twist, if you will, something like that. Really elegant, beautiful fragrance, lovely for when you want to feel dressed up and feminine and beautiful. And by the way, although it is a feminine fragrance, I think this is one that any of my fragrances would wear super well on gentlemen. This one in particular, I think would be particularly intoxicating, uh, sort of meshed with male hormones on male skin. New York Fifth Avenue, beautiful fragrance. I'm going to go next to the sexiest fragrance. I have a lot of sexy fragrances. <laughs> I think a lot of my beautiful floral and leathery fragrances come across super sexy on me in particular, my berry fragrances. Sea Intense was a contender and so was La Belle, La Belle, Jean-Paul Gaultier, La Belle, the original one. That 
made this category twice this past year. I didn't realize that. Usually in previous years, I've strived to have something different in each category each month. So you get a lot of variety of reviews over the year, but somehow LaBelle made it in twice. However, even sexier than that is this gorgeousness right here that is probably pretty polarizing. I would absolutely say you must sample this first. Some of y'all might find this sickening, sickening. Prepare to be sick of this fragrance. And then others of y'all, if you know, you know, this is the absolutely fantastic Syrah from Tiziana Terenzi from the gold, I think this is called Luna, the Luna series with the gold bottles. This, this is a pricey fragrance. So I would absolutely say sample first. It is for me very much a nice combination of a sweet, deep, almost syrupy passion fruit scent combined with saffron. If you understand the sort of airy nature of, of saffron in fragrances, along with muskiness, along with some leather touches to it. So it's pretty va va boom. It owns a room. It is hugely projecting, very long lasting. This owns the space when it walks in and it is sexy, sexy all the way. Husband loves this on me. There's something really intoxicating about this. I don't know. There's something about like that musky saffron leathery combination that really draws you in and captures your attention, snatches your soul. <laughs> snatches your soul. So you have to be a lot of whatever you are, woman, man, whatever, to wear this fragrance. Uh, I think it would wear well across genders. I particularly find it sexy on me as I like to consider myself a very you know, feminine woman. And I think it smells amazing on me. So this is hands down my winner for sexy from uh, 2023. My biggest surprise of the entire year is one that I probably would never have thought to purchase on my own. It was sent to me in PR from Twisted Lily. And I'm so glad that they did because when I first smelled this, I thought it was really weird. So the, the surprise comes in the fact that I thought it was weird when I first smelled it. And as it sat on my skin longer, I was like, wow, this is quite beautiful. And this is, I just, can we just, this bottle... We're talking about lineage from Amouage in this gorgeous turquoisey bottle that looks a little bit bluer on screen. It's more like a turquoisey green here and in person in these lights. This is such an amazing, interesting, different, unique fragrance. You will not smell like anyone else with this on. I want to tell you a few of the key notes, frankincense, ginger, pepper, myrrh. I can tell you that this does smell like a beautiful, clean, non-smoky church incense type of smell. If you think about the thuribles that are in Catholic churches that are swung, if you will, up and down the aisles to fill the church with smoke. Imagine minus the smoke, but the actual just scent of what's in those here. It's a, it's a really tough fragrance to describe, one that you definitely need to try, but think of like incense brightened up by a little bit of ginger. Ginger is not pronounced. It is to some people, not to me, but I do think that ginger and whatever else is in here, there's something that lends some brightness to this and keeps it from being too dense and heavy and serious. But it definitely has this sort of aquatic vibe to it. I don't know if it's the bottle that is making that sort of suggestion to my mind that I'm interpreting the smell that way. But it leans incensey and salty and aquatic in a way that I wanted Armani's Blue Turquoise to be. That fragrance was a little bit much for me to wear, but I imagine that fragrance toned down to give you some of this. Another super long-lasting, uh, heavily projecting fragrance that really fills a room and is alluring to other people. It's one that my husband enjoys and the kids like, which is interesting. They don't, they're very, very fussy about fragrances in this house and they don't hesitate to tell me if something, you know, doesn't smell good to them. They all really like this. They said I smelled fresh. That was the word that was used, fresh um, and clean and interesting. I don't think it's a clean smell because of that incense, but there's just something really, or it's not incense, it's frankincense, which is different than incense. But think about uh, if like incense was a spa oil what that might smell like in the air when you walk into a salon and you'll get an idea of what this smells like. A very luxurious, expensive, upscale salon with really interesting oils in the air. In the category of best bottle, I don't know that the bottle is that amazing, but the label really, really draws me in. And every time I see it, I get super happy. <laughs> it's none other than Snowy Owl from Zoologist. And let me get this close up to the camera here. Look at this adorable owl in this capelet in the snow, Snowy Owl. 
And in a number of videos, I have talked about the fact that we back up to a little, you know, piece of wood back there, woods, and we get owls sometimes at night. And it's just a fantastic sound, like this really awe inspiring. It, it freezes us in our tracks when we hear it outside. You want to hear it? It goes like this ooh, 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 or something like that. <laughs> And, you know, it's just a reminder that there's this entire universe happening out there. Like the world is spinning. Nature is doing its thing. Everything is happening out there, even though we're in the little bubble of our home here. And I just love this adorable little owl. This smell is clean and musky and cool, but warm at the same time. Forget what the notes tell you. Like if you look up the notes, it talks about coconut and cologne and all this stuff, all these florals and some green notes, mint even. But for the most part, it's a, it's a very sort of fresh, cool, musky scent. But there's something about this that evokes the warmth and fuzziness and texture of bird feathers. All right, if you think about a clean, some birds are stinky. If you think about a clean bird, <laughs> what the underside of the feathers feel like, that really sort of soft, pillowy feeling, there's something in this fragrance that, that makes you think of that. So I love that about this fragrance. It's unique, it's different, it's interesting, not for everyone. Definitely sample beforehand because it's a little bit strange, but I just, I'm, I'm here for the entire aesthetic, including this beautiful label. And I do think the bottles are nice and substantial with this thick base and this curvature here and the nice caps with the stamping of the zoologist uh, logo, logo, <sighs> zoologist logo on the top. In the category of worst bottle, I'm still hanging on to this fragrance because I really enjoy the actual fragrance. The bottle I, uh, uh, I'm close to like abhorring. <laughs> it's from Accendus or Accendus. Somebody help me figure out how to say this. Luna Dulcius or Luna Dulcius. This is a coconut vanilla fragrance with a little bit of muskiness. I think it's one of the more mature summer fragrances. In fact, it reminds me of 2017. Is it Bronze Goddess from Estee Lauder? The one that's in the copper bottle that has coconut and vanilla. And I think that one has some florals too. This has some florals as well, but it's mostly this very creamy, coconutty, vanillic fragrance that I think, you know, because of the coconut, we think about it as a summer fragrance, but it really could be a year round fragrance. It's wonderful. The fragrance itself, a little bit of muskiness in there, but this bottle is like, I don't like it. I don't understand what's happening here. It's like, I feel like I should put like a carabiner there or something. It looks like a lighter. There's a new bottle design. I was hoping to use this up this year so I could purchase the new one. And I still have hopes of doing that this coming year. But yeah, the fragrance itself is fabulous. In the category of fave blind buy, I actually think I purchased this the year before, but that category only means that it is a fragrance that I have blind bought regardless of when the purchase date is. When I tell you that I adore this fragrance beyond words, <laughs> it is Shenkwan from Zerzhov. Shenkwan from Zerzhov. No one knows the notes because they are vaulted, but I pick up this really delicious, creamy, almost coconutty, cocooning tea. There's a tea sort of smell here. There's maybe even like something in the neighborhood of whatever gives a Play Doh scent, vanilla or tonka bean or something like that, that gives this like a fresh, fresh, not a stale, a fresh can of Play-Doh. Who remembers when you were a kid opening up the new Play-Doh, that amazing smell right when you peeled open? Imagine that smell combined with coconut, combined with tea, perhaps some sandalwood here. This is a very cocooning, comforting, like sweater weather type of uh, fragrance. And I'm showing y'all way too much. Let me tuck that back in. Let me tuck, tuck that back in. Y'all, my shoulders are so cold. <laughs> I'm trying to be cute. My shoulders are cold. Anyway, this is, this, this does a number on my mind. It's like instantly calming, zen-like, beautiful, comforting smell. I love this. I love this. I love this. In the category of not a safe blind buy, and this is for those of you that like adventurous smells, you're tired of smelling like everyone else, you really want to be unique, you want to feel like, Oh, factory artwork walking around. You might want to get your hands on Queer Elang from Ili Saab. Wow, wow, absolutely fantastic. Yellow floral, obviously, Elang Elang is the uh, main floral note in here. 
accompanied by leather. Hello, queer. Okay. And there's also like an incense vibe to this, a lot like what's in lineage. Okay. Like that Amouage lineage, this sort of, you know, frankincense, maybe even myrrh combination, but I think the notes say only frankincense. So yes, there's this sort of very, again, clean incense type of smell. That's all of these like imagine oils and a little touch of greenness combined into one scent, right? Olibanum. This is, this is really, really good, really exotic smelling, very different. I love the way that the bottle kind of gives you an impression of the, the nature of this smell, exotic, different, floral, leathery, incense without any smoke. Again, no smoke in the fragrance. My husband is trying to terrify me. There are windows in the little filming studio and he just popped up in the window like, like Jason in Friday the 13th. Anyway, I don't know where you can find this. I ended up purchasing this on FragranceNet several years ago, uh, but I'm sure if you scour the internet, you can check this out. And again, you need to want to smell different and strong. This is a very projecting, long lasting fragrance. I said it smells like incense without the smoke, but if you look at the reviews, some people feel like this is a smoky fragrance. I can't say that. Well, I guess sometimes it feels that way, but not in the way that some other fragrances have like a suffocating smoke accord, nothing like that. So mostly leather and that yellow floral with touches of like that incense-y olibanum type of feel. In the hidden gem category is a fragrance that I have talked about quite a bit and I think others are starting to pick up on because the person released a second one in her line. This is from Stephanie Letta, who is a YouTuber that really was more in the makeup space. She started her own fragrance line and this was her first release. It's 22 Auris and the company is called Letta, like her last name, Stephanie Letta. I love the beautiful simplicity of this, the girliness of this. This is so sweet and bright and fresh and fluffy and fun and just like uber feminine, uber feminine. In fact, I might even call this a girly fragrance, like one that perhaps a younger crowd would be more attracted to because it is so bright and so fluffy. There's musk mallow that comes across like a marshmallowy type of smell here. There's iris and pear, and it's just bright and uplifting and I don't know. There's something so lovely and light and feminine about this. It's what you want to smell like when you want to feel like your girliest self. This is a very highly feminine fragrance. I want to be clear about that. It doesn't mean, you know, anything other than super girly, super feminine. I like that it also feels a little clean. There's some sandalwood in the base to give it some substance. And this is another one that I would not hesitate to wear to the office. And I have worn to office affairs and been hugged and told that I smell really clean and beautiful. Like, oh, you smell really nice. You smell clean. I love it. So this is lovely and sweet. Clean and sweet is the name of the game here with some fluffiness. I would say this has definitely like that, you know, marshmallowy thing that seems to be really uh, popular these days in terms of the scent texture without being too in the powdery direction, more like just I don't know, cloud-like and fluffy, really, really delightful hidden gem in the sense that not enough people are talking about this because it's not a mainstream fragrance, but definitely deserves some hype. You can only get this on her website. So look up Stephanie Letta and 22 Auris, worth every penny. Okay, friends, we are in the portion of the video. Where we're going to talk about the bottom three for the year, the middle three and the top three, again, across the categories from the previous fragrance awards of the year. This is one that I still have in my collection. We're gonna talk about the low three because I adore the scent. And the reason that is, it is in the low three is because the performance is pretty close to abysmal. <laughs> and that is from Bulgari or Bulgari. I always say Bulgari, but I think formally it's Bulgari. And I just got a fingerprint on the paper label. Mm, this is Otevert. I adore the scent profile. It's one that reminds me of my 30s when I wore a lot of citrus fragrances, late 20s into my 30s. I was like a citrus fragrance fanatic. This is mostly citrus, a beautiful, bright, easygoing citrus, like everyday wear, not in the you know household cleaner category, just a really light, thin citrus with green tea. That's what the fragrance is about. It's light, it's easy, it's a beautiful hot weather fragrance. Like when it is unbearably hot outside, this is the type of fragrance that you wanna reach for. Problem is, this is pretty fleeting, it doesn't last long. If it did last long, I'd be all over it. It gives me vibes of like green tea from Elizabeth Arden, if you remember that fragrance that was super popular, I think in the late 90s into the early 2000s. So this does have a little bit of spiciness and woodiness, but for the most part, it's citrus and green tea and is 
magnificent. The kind of fragrance you want to wear when you come fresh out of the shower and you want to smell clean and bright and put together, except, you know, you got to re-up probably every couple of hours, you know, at best. So that's why it's in the low three. And then the second in the low three category is a fragrance that had an absolutely glorious opening. I really loved it. I thought, wow, this is perfume nirvana here. It's Horchata de Vini from Sphinx. So this has a beautiful, bright cinnamon opening. Almost, You almost get like this cherry accord with the cinnamon too. And you feel like you have arrived. <laughs> it's like this really super fruity, cinnamony opening that is just like, oh, this is what I want to smell like for the rest of my life. The problem is that it dies down into, and I have to give credit to someone else, one of the viewers out here, one of you put this in your comment and I'm gonna borrow your thought because that's exactly what it came across like to me. It got really sort of dusty, <laughs> dusty in the dry down in a way that I didn't expect. So you have just like a faint hint of what horchata smells like, which is a Mexican dessert drink. And you know, it smells like a vanilla and milk and cinnamon spices really good smell really light smell in some ways it's not a thick smell it's light and, and it's it's a sweet smell it's a very comforting smell but this fragrance was like the dustiest version of that possible almost like it was like a dirty dusty version i don't know it just didn't work for me and it was just disappointing so that has found a new home and i'm hoping that it worked out for whoever picked that up and then the third fragrance that for me was a low for the year because it was super hyped up. A lot of you love this. A lot. A lot of the other fragrance channels talked about this particular one and they just adored it. They ordered backup bottles. They ran through the bottle. They ran through two bottles. They were on their third bottle. And here I am still on the first one like, huh? What's happening here? How come I'm not getting the same experience that everybody else has? And that happens sometimes. And it's okay. And that doesn't make those people wrong for loving it. It just makes the fragrance not for me. And that was Egad Silk Santal from Kayali. This is a fragrance that was so soft, so fleeting, so super duper light, probably in the neighborhood of this light, maybe even lighter than this, less detectable than this on my skin personally. And there was something, something in this fragrance that just didn't agree with my nose. Like I was like, mm. I kept having one of those moments like, mm. <laughs> and you know, I like to give fragrances a chance where two, three, sometimes four times. And I, I did give this one a full chance and it just, it wasn't for me. This has found a happy new home with a fragrance friend here out on YouTube. Hey girl, hey, and she loves it. And I am thrilled for her. So then I have a middle three, and really, I mean, I could have had a top six, but I was trying to stay true to the three, three, and three category. So these are all loves, but the three that are in the top, I love even more. So that's a weird thing to say because I love these two. But let's get into Virgin Mint, Virgin Mint by Carolina Herrera. So this is part of the confidential line. And the long ones like this are the EDTs, the Eau de Toilette. And then the smaller squatter ones are the Eau de Parfum versions. And this fragrance, you know, it's one that I purchased a couple of years ago. I liked it and I put it on the shelf and then I pulled it back out this year and was like, let me see what's going on with this fragrance again. And was like, wow, how come I haven't pulled for this more? Very much a summer fragrance that if you are tired of your winter heavy hitters would do really nicely here in the winter to give you a fresh pick me up type of fragrance. In fact, I wonder what this would smell like if it were layered with snowy owl, like those two together, that might be interesting. Thing. But about this fragrance, about Virgin Mint, it is very much a classic mint fragrance, a beautiful, bright, fresh mint, like the kind of mint, it smells almost like a mint julep, or even like a mint that you would use for mojito, for example. Beautiful mint accompanied with a nice dose of citrus to also like, like a, a, a bright player alongside the mint here and a base of vetiver. And the vetiver gives it almost this grassy, like hay-like woodiness to it, but more than anything, a beautiful bright mint fragrance. Very smooth, very refined, beautiful blend, gorgeous for summer, long lasting. This is one that took me through the entire day this past summer uh, and has a nice projection and is very well received by others in the room. One that I would also not hesitate to wear to work events as well. I gave this fragrance a lot of airtime this past year and it almost made it into the top three for the year. Say what? <laughs> but I'm keeping it here again because the other three I love even more. And this is, I adore this. 
Kate Spade, and it's, I think the official name is New York Sparkle, although I call it Sparkle. This is the smaller bottle. The bigger bottle has a beautiful gold banding. I would say go for the big bottle just for the aesthetic. I took this on a work trip, and it's not a work type of fragrance, but it worked, no pun intended, in my work setting. It is fruity and floral and sweet and fluffy and creamy all at the same time. This is so beautiful, feminine, uh, moderately lasting. I did kind of overspray when I wore it into the office, which you shouldn't do, but I did. And that was maybe not a good idea, although I think it wore quite well. It's really sweet. Black currant is one of the main fruity notes and then rose, like a very soft rose. And it has vanilla and this like fluffy creaminess to it. I know that doesn't seem like the two can go together because fluffy implies light and creamy implies dense, but it works in this fragrance and it's so good. If you like fruity florals, you definitely want to get your nose on this one for sure. And then my personal favorite tobacco fragrance in my entire tobacco collection, and I have quite a few for a female and I have tested a whole bunch. This is Ombra Tabac from Daniel Hosea. Love these bottles. I like that they're strange and different they're they are not it's almost like a wave design on both sides this is tobacco beautiful base of amber the tobacco is like a wet tobacco like tobacco crushed wet leaves if you will and a beautiful base of this resinous amber is sweetened up with vanilla this is tobacco for the ladies that are scared of masculine tobacco fragrances this has a certain amount of femininity to it that i think makes it squarely unisex with a few toes into feminine territory very wearable it comes off like a sweet tobacco on your skin others will love it on you i think if you're the kind of person that enjoys this sort of fragrance you do need to enjoy amber fragrances because the amber accord in here is pretty strong this is long lasting and projecting comforting smell, a little bit on the mature side, very much a fall winter smell. Would I wear this in the summer? Maybe in a cool evening, but it's, it's a pretty heavy, dense fragrance, not cloying, but heavy. Okay. Like it has a lot of sort of presence and depth to it. Beautiful. Next is the top three. And again, these had to be in the top three category in one of the months to be considered for this. So it's not like my top three favorite of the year. It's the top three of the top category across the 12 months. I'm going to start off with this gorgeousness here, Greenwich Village from Bond Number no. 9, which if you know the joke for this for me, when I first tested this, I thought it smelled like hot stale breath. <laughs> that happened and then I tested it again and thank god I did it was like my sample was bad or old or something and folks that happened so you know testing something from a sample or a decant is only a part of the story and that even though I always tell people to sample first if you can it doesn't always give you the full story this is so good I uh, wore this last year several times and the one time that stands out the most to me I was on a road trip with my son we were out visiting colleges and I had the sunroof open in the spring the air was flowing through the car and he thought I smelled really good and that's always a nice compliment it is this combination of like this musky woodiness as this really nice strong background for like a background or a bed if you will upon which there are some light floral and fruity notes. This does remind me, I have to say, of Baccarat Rouge 540 a little bit, although this is, I would say, a little bit sweeter, a little airier, a little easier to wear, and it's really enjoyable. It's a beautiful summer fragrance. If I, in spring and summer, if I, I mean, you can wear it all year round. If I didn't know any better, I would say it had the note of cologne in it, which gives you sort of that sea air and watermelon type of smell. There's something like that that comes across in this fragrance to me but it's it's super duper delightful and then my br540 but better smell is trajan from electimus i really really love to wear this it is bright and it is fresh it has that airiness and that sort of leathery it's like a like a imagine like okay check this out for those of you <laughs> For those of you that don't know what saffron smells like, for me, saffron and fragrances comes across as though cotton candy were made out of like an airy leather. That is what saffron smells like. If you smelled it in rice, for example, if you've used the true saffron threads in rice, it has that kind of almost like a, like a musky leathery, but very, very airy version of that. Like if that were a cloud instead of those materials, right? 
kind of hard to describe. That is a little bit of what saffron smells like. There's citrus in the fragrance, a beautiful, sharp, like blood orange, bitter blood orange, some saltiness. It's bright and it's fun and it is super long lasting and projecting and I adore this. I just noticed that the symbol, the Electimus symbol here looks like Hunger Games, doesn't it? May the odds be ever in our favor. Fantastic fragrance. And then maybe one of my top fragrances of the year and I'm gonna round out the video with this one. I just love Commodity Milk Plus or Bold and I also love the regular expressive version. The other version that is like the personal scent space, I don't know that I've tried that or remember trying it. I, I think I did in store. But anyway, the expressive is beautiful and this one even more so. When I first tried this in store, I was a little bit like, oof, maybe not. And then I was walking around and gave my hand the smell and was like, what is that amazingness? And it is this. This is very long lasting and pretty projecting in a space and has this beautiful, sweet, like condensed, creamy milk okay i'm gonna get it right this time because i what said did i say last time dulce de leche well maybe because that's like almost like a caramelized version of the cream condensed milk right so think <laughs> think of the kind of condensed is it condensed yes not evaporated condensed milk the kind that you would use in eggnog the fragrance has that sort of consistency to it with like a, a sweet marshmallowy nature and some woodiness in the background it's very sweet very thick very creamy to me and I just adore this. I think this is one of the most comforting, lovely, cocooning types of smells. Beautiful for winter, cuddle up by a fireplace and smell feminine and cozy and like a warm hug in a bottle. And a little of this goes a long way, friends. So that is the wrap for my fragrance awards in review for the year. Let me know your thoughts. Have you worn any of these? What were some of your favorites? Happy New Year again, and thank you so much for being here with me. I'm wishing you a fantastic 2024. Mwah.